everyone. Um, I can't connect to the internet, so we'll have to, to struggle along with, without it right now. Um, that's actually kind of bad because I wanted to read off what questions you have on Piazza. So I'm going <coughs> to... Um, well, uh, Snika, maybe you can tell me what questions people have on Piazza. <coughs> yeah, just, just get me to a Piazza. Um, and I just want to know, I had a question item, what questions people had. In the meantime, I'll, I'll load up my lecture notes here. So, so homework questions for um, uh, for today's lecture. So I put an item on Piazza that, if my network was working, you could all see. Because um, I figured in such a large class, what are you going to do? Shout your question down here. Maybe it's a little hard. So I'm going to do that before every class that I'll give you the opportunity to, to see this thing with whatever questions you may have. And then I can go over some of that stuff in class. So <coughs> um, here someone asked, what documentation is required for the source code? And so you're in luck that for homework one, I'm not asking for any specific documentation. So right now, there's no check for do you have add param, do you have add return. But that luck won't last long. In the next week or two, I'm going to hook up um, a program called check style to, the <coughs> uh, to that checker thing, to that netbrat checker. And it's going to mercilessly flag every missing at param and every missing at return and <coughs> every mistake in the Java docs. And so at that point, you expect it to put in fully conforming Java doc. So you might as well get going and do it now. It brings good karma. But you're not going to get penalized in, in the first one. And the other question was, <coughs> Are there specific names for the classes? And so, yes, absolutely. If somehow um, it's not crystal clear what a particular set of classes should be named, um, please ask because if it, <coughs> the, the grading tool has a, has a very clear notion what these files must be named, and if they're not named just so, then it'll fail. And so that's an indication that you didn't name it right. That's a big reason to use the, uh, <coughs> that netbrad thing. Um, if it passes netbrad, then there's a good chance that you named everything right. Uh, on the other hand, if it didn't pass netbrad and you get an error message that says class homework 1A was not found, that's a powerful signal that maybe a class named homework 1A was required and you better supply it. So when, uh, by the time that you turn it in, um, the hope is very much that a netbrad blesses your uh, whatever you put in so that like, the basic things are right and that the grader can focus on the more difficult things that an automatic thing could not judge, like the quality of your code. Um, but, um, so if you have any question about what should this or that be named and it's not painfully obvious, by all means put a question on Piazza and, um, and I'll answer it. So there should be no, absolutely no wiggle room or ambiguity in what every single class and what every single method should be named. It should be totally uh, defined by uh, the program. The third question was, what about those output formats? And let me. So this is admittedly a, a, a not a very standardized thing. Um, but it's what the textbook does and what I want you to do in, uh, in all of the homeworks until we get to the point that we use a more professional tool, which will happen sometime in the middle of the semester. So whenever you produce a program whose name ends in tester, like XXX tester, that, that the fact that it's named tester is a... Yes. Okay. You were having this problem last class. Yes. Too, right? This machine can't get on the network, and we had another. 
uh, at least another machine back here. But what I really care is that this machine gets on the network ASAP. In fact, let me interrupt you.